Hey, Super Fizz here. I can't tell you the number of times that I create a video, but I don't record it. Um, it's a little bit stressful for me. And so I'm like putting all these things together and I just exercise uh, and my mind is like focused on what I want to talk about. Uh, and, you know, I get home and my setup isn't great. Like it's all wonky and, you know, shits here and there. So I'm like pulling it together and I'm ready to record. Um, but I have to do a state of the stake. I have to... I have to make my voice heard. Um, the community is at a very complicated point uh, where if we don't change something now, the consequences will be grave. And the best way that I've been able to imagine this is as an analogy. Funny story, I just recorded this analogy eight minutes ago. Oh wait, no, I didn't record it. I forgot to press the record button. So I'm gonna go through it again, uh, first time for you. Uh, and hopefully it, it kind of gets a point, the seriousness of the issue that we're facing. Um, so I call myself the Beacon Chain Community Health Consultant. Uh, and in that role, I want to imagine that I'm stepping into a family um, and uh, kind of looking at the systems within this family. And we have a father named Daniel. Um, Daniel is a hardworking guy. He's been uh, raising a family. He has a son named Ethan. Uh, Ethan is 17 years old. Uh, let's call him 17 and a half. In about six months, he's probably going to turn 18. Not probably, he's going to turn 18 because he's 17 and a half. Um, and it's tradition, it's custom in, in this, this culture when a son turns 18 to give him uh, a car. It's, he's not really giving him the car. Daniel and Ethan have been working on this car together for years. Uh, they've, they've both put a lot of time into it. It means a lot to both of them and it's a, it's a really special thing. Um, and so... Um, Ethan is extremely excited to get this car. He feels like he is, uh, you know, he's an adult. Uh, and in this analogy, Ethan represents the community. Uh, he has invested a lot into this car uh, and he, he really feels like he's ready to take the keys. Uh, but there's a problem. Uh, and that is that uh, Ethan has a drinking problem. He uh, is known to uh, consume large amounts of alcohol behind Daniel's back. Um, and he will essentially look at Daniel and say, no, man, I'm not, not doing that. Um, but Daniel finds evidence. He finds bottles. Um, he sees evidence in Ethan's behavior that Ethan has a drinking problem. Uh, in this case, the drinking problem represents the majority client. Uh, and so Daniel has, has kind of been having these, these talks with Ethan, like, hey, you know, it's not really a great idea. Uh, it can really, you know, put you at risk. Um, I'm afraid to give you the car. Uh, if, if you have this drinking problem. And Ethan is like, hey, dad, no, man, I'm over that. I don't have that drinking problem anymore. Daniel continues to see evidence of the drinking problem, though. Uh, and the biggest evidence came a couple of days ago. Michael Sproul re released a report um, showing that one validator on the beacon chain, ooh, I just switched gears, uh, has 68%. So uh, we know that there is a problem, that, that Ethan continues to have a drinking problem. Uh, but Ethan is so excited to get this car. Uh, he's, he's pushing Daniel. Can I have the keys? Can I have the keys? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And Daniel doesn't want to say no to his son. He knows that when his son is of age, that it's time to give the keys. Um, but he's really worried. And so what Daniel does instead is um, he realizes that he can identify where Ethan is getting uh, this alcohol. It's a small community. There are only a, a few possible places he could be getting it from. Uh, maybe it's a liquor store. Maybe it's a neighbor. Um, and so Daniel thinks if he can just identify where it's coming from, then he can put a stop to Ethan's problem. I want to, as an aside, this is not really like healthy dynamics. You wouldn't really cut off your child's liquor supply in order to stop them. But in this analogy, it works. Uh, so so Daniel hires a private investigator. There are two private investigators in this case, and they are working to identify the source of the problem. Uh, and the idea being that if we can find the source of the problem, we can have a, a side chat with them and say, hey, look, uh, Ethan's turning 18 and we want to turn over this car to him. Uh, he's really eager to receive it. But if he has this drinking problem, there's a, a good chance that he could wreck the car uh, and, and maybe cause injury to himself. And we really don't want that to happen. And so 
that's kind of where we are in this analogy right now, that um, if, we, if we can identify the providers who are running the supermajority client, then we can have a conversation with them and say, uh, hey, look, what you're doing isn't really healthy for our chain. If you make better decisions, then the chain can last a lot longer. And uh, if, if none of that analogy made sense to you, I want to wrap it up really quickly by saying, uh, right now there are four clients on the Beacon Chain. They are Teku, Prism, Nimbus, and Lighthouse. Um, right now, Prism it accounts for 68% of the validators on the network. It is a risk to the network. Uh, if we were to uh, engage the merge with Prism having 68% of the validators, we, we have the potential to crash the network. And that's something that we really don't want to happen. We can increase the use of uh, primarily Nimbus and Teku um, to give a much better balance uh, to the network, ideally with each client representing 25%. If that were the case, then a failure in any of those clients would mean that the network would continue running correctly. And that's really what we want to get to. So I, I see a lot, of, a lot of clamor in the community for when merge, when merge. Uh, but, and I see a lot of desire on behalf of implementers and developers to turn over the network to, to get the merge going. But as a responsible third party, we have to step back and say, if there is a supermajority client, it's not healthy for the merge. And rather than talking about, I see you, Evan Venice. If, if we talk about delaying the merge, um, we're making, we're inconveniencing everyone. What we really need to do is resolve this problem before the merge occurs. We have about five months. That is plenty of time for everyone to change their client if they need to. So as we, as we identify these parties, or maybe you're a party, maybe you are one of these exchanges who is uh, running Prism, and until this point, you've been resistant. I need you to know that we're going to come knocking on your door soon and ask you to do the right thing. Um, if you are a client of one of these providers and you don't know what validator or what client your service is running, you need to contact them and let them know that if they're running Prism, you need them to change. And they're going to, to give you excuses. They're going to say, well, we have to have a remote signer. They're going to say, well, Prism works in a way that, that, that we need it to do things. Uh, there are lots and lots of excuses. All of this is filled with excuses. And it's time for those to stop. It's time for providers to take responsibility and do the right thing. It's time for you as an ETH holder to make sure that your ETH is staking in a way that's healthy for the network. This problem is arising because people are failing to take the health of the network into account when they're staking. They are focusing on extracting maximum value rather than the health of the network. And I can tell you the way to extract maximum value is to promote a healthy network. Um, so <laughs> maybe this recorded, maybe it didn't, I don't know. Uh, it's time for me to get in gear. It's time for you to begin getting in gear, to begin talking about this, to make a bigger deal of it. I'm not, I have no interest in talking about delaying the merge. Uh, in this example, Ethan is going to turn 18 no matter what we do. What we need to do is fix this problem before the merge so it's not, a, it, it's not an issue then. It's well within our grasp in five months to do this. Um, it really needs to be done in two months. Uh, and so it's really going to take everyone's effort, everyone who has up to this point said, it's not my problem. I need you to know that it is your problem. You need to take responsibility. You need to help us help the network. Take care.